Hey, what's up, Master Trainers? This is your host, Charlie Jonas here, straight out of Civic Valley, and today we're gonna talk about Pokemon Legends Arceus. <laughs> Alright, that's it, so in today's video we're gonna be doing something a little different, however, something I want to do more often here in the channel. And today, yeah, we're gonna talk about why, at least in my opinion, this whole Pokemon Legends Arceus thing might suck, alright? But hold on, before you dislike this video, just settle down and hear me up until the end, alright? Since I'm going to explain exactly what I mean, and I might surprise you by the end. Alright, so in order to do that, we're gonna be dividing this video in two parts, alright? The first one is going to be slightly longer than the second one, but it will be just that, and then finally, my conclusion. Alright then, so let's go ahead and talk about the first part, which is the Hisuian forms and new Pokemon that will be coming along with this game, alright? And then, for the sake of this part, we're gonna be sorting these new Pokemon and Hisuian forms into 9 different categories, alright? So we're gonna be talking about New Regional Forms, aka Hisuian, New Regional Lineages, also Hisuian Lineages, New Regional Pokemon, plus New Exclusive Evolutions, New Regional Evolutions, although which this time they are alternative for the ones we already know, New Alternative Evolutions, which are exclusive of this game, New Evolutions, exclusive of this game. A new Lineage, also exclusive. New Pokemon, exclusive. And last but definitely not least, you're gonna be talking about the Lord Forms. Alright then, are you ready? Because here we go. Oh yeah, and by the way, I'm gonna definitely be using the leaked images of the Pokemon from this game, alright? So if you don't want any spoiler at all, and don't want to check out their looks, before the game is released, so spoiler alert, alright? If you don't want to see them, you can either close this video right now, or just listen to it. Alright, so once you have been warned, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, and so let's get started with the new regional Pokemon, aka Hisuian. And here in this category, you're gonna be feeding the Hisuian Lilligant. Yeah, so to be honest, I don't have any problem with this form at all, you know, since it's not something you've never seen before, although it definitely looks way different than the original form, or should I say, than the Unovan form, yeah, since this one is the Hisuian one, so it came first, so this one should probably be the original one, and the one we know, the Unovan one. And what seems a little odd for me, here in this case, is that this time, this regional form looks so much different than the other one we got to know. Another thing that kind of surprises me, is that this Pokemon, looking considerably fragile, at least in my opinion, got a grass and fighting type before Sarina, alright? So yeah, if you wanna know what I think, I think it doesn't make sense at all, alright? Not to his swing league of have this typing, but Sarina being a pure grass, while you should obviously be also a grass and fighting one. And when I said that is not a big deal at all, since we already got used to original forms once Alola came up, right? We're talking about the seventh generation. Although we only got to see the same case of this one right here, which is a Pokemon who does not have a evolution nor a previous evolution on the 8th generation Galar region, alright? So the Stunfisk, as far as I could tell, is the only one we can say that matches this case right here. A Pokemon that got a regional form that does not evolve nor has any pre-evolution. Alright, so nothing new so far. Let's go ahead and move on now to the new regional lineages, aka Hisuian lineages, alright? So now we're talking about a Pokemon that evolved. 
Alright then, and then we're gonna get started with his swing Voltorb and his swing Electrode, his swing Growlithe, his swing Arcanine, his swing Zorua and his swing Zoroark. Alright, so so far so good. The same thing as before. Nothing that we never seen before in the franchise. Alright, so since regional lineages are quite common, although my problem here with these new regional lineages. Is exclusive with the Hisuian Zorua and Hisuian Zoroark typing, right? I don't think it makes sense at all, and I definitely don't like it, right? So for me, it doesn't make sense for them to be normal and ghost. What kind of typing is that? I don't think we ever saw anything like it, like this. And another thing that I don't like at all is the fact that this Pokemon used to be a ghost type, even though it's kind of the secondary one. And then it turned out being a pure dark type. I don't think it makes sense. So how do a Pokemon can stop being a ghost type? Is it that possible? Is, there, is it that possible to unbecome a ghost? You know? So it would make sense if in the past it was one type. And then in the future, since now we have two timelines, the past one and the current one, it became a ghost, right? Because, I don't know, a living thing can die, but I've never seen a dead thing returning back to life so i think that this typing normal and ghost is definitely lame all right i wouldn't do it at all if it was at least i don't know dark and ghost and then somehow for some reason along the generations it dropped the ghost type and became a pure dark type all right or if at least the one who had normal and ghost type was only with swing zero arc it would make a little more sense all right although to be honest in my opinion i think it would be best for this pokemon to be a dark and normal type and then with the time it could have dropped the normal type and stayed only with the dark one which if you think about it is exactly what happened with the other cases think about it his swing voltorb and his swing electrode electric and grass so what does it mean? It means that they are not actually his swing Voltorb or his swing Electrode. They are the original ones, right? So the ones we know should be the Cantonian ones. It means that on its original natural habitat and environment, it was originally Electric and Grass. And then along with the years, as it moved to the Kanto region, somehow it adapted and dropped the Grass typing remaining a pure electric type, right? What makes sense? Then let's think about Hisuian Growlithe and Hisuian Arcanine, or should I say Growlithe and Arcanine, since now we know that the ones we used to call like that are actually the Cantonian Growlithe and the Cantonian Arcanine. So we can say that originally in the Hisuian region, they were fire and rock, right? Because they had all the conditions, all the proper environment to be this typing and then along the years since it moved to the Kanto region and if I'm not wrong Growlithe and Arcanine are endemic from Cinnabar Island so perhaps there they found a different environment that would contribute for them to drop the rock type and stay only with the fire one since if you think about it a volcano might sound a proper place for a Pokemon to be just a fire type Although, in my opinion, it would be very cool and justifiable to remain firing rock, right? But that's not the case here. The case is that this typing makes sense for the ones we used to know, right? Electric grass dropped the grass, remained electric. Firing rock dropped the rock, remained fire. And then when you move along to Zoru and Zoro Arc, it sucks, right? It doesn't make sense at all. Normal and ghost, they didn't drop the ghost and it remained just normal nor the other way around, okay? So I definitely don't like this typing choice here at all. Alright, so now let's go talk about the new regional, his swim forms, yeah? With new exclusive evolutions. And then we're gonna start talking about the Hisuian Sneasel and its evolution is Sneasler, alright? So here, the same thing, I don't think we should call it Hisuian Sneasel, since now we tend to believe that this one was the original one, so the Sneasel we know is actually the Jotonian Sneasel, right? 
and then we're gonna be talking about his Suyan Quillfish, or should I say Quillfish, and its exclusive past evolution over Quill. Alright then, so here again, having a regional form which evolves into a brand new Pokemon is not a big deal at all, and it's not the first time we've seen it, alright? Since it already came along with the 8th generation Galar region. Although I still have a problem here with this Pokemon, more specifically about the typing of the Sneasel and Sneasler, right? It's pretty much the same problem of before. This typing is way too further from the typing we got to know in our current timeline. So think about it, in the very beginning, originally, it was poison and fighting, and then as this Pokemon moved all the way to Johto region, Alright, I get it that, okay, now in a new environment, new conditions, it didn't find the perfect condition anymore to evolve into the Sneasler once again, right? And then we know with the time, when this Pokemon eventually got into the Sinnoh region, which is the new Hisuian region once again, it found the proper conditions to evolve once again. And that's the problem, it's about the typing. So how can a poison and fighting type along the time become a dark and nice. Yeah, I don't think it makes sense at all. And if you think about which of the two regions have more eyes, Hisui or Johto? As far as I can tell, the former Hisui Sino region has way more ice lands than Johto region. So it wouldn't make way more sense for this Pokemon originally be at least dark and ice, and then with the time, become something else, you know, like, okay, so since he moved from the Hisui region into the Johto region, which doesn't have that much ice, then it could just drop the ice type and remain pure dark, or I don't know, it could be, you know, so instead of being dark and ice, it could have been poison and ice, and then with the time it became dark and ice, or, I don't know, dark and fighting, and then it became dark and ice, right? Which again, I don't think makes sense when you leave a place which has way more ice to go to another one which has a lot less and then still have the ice type, okay? So, I definitely don't like this typing choice at all. I don't think it makes sense, I think it's lame and I think it sucks, right? And I don't even see how it makes sense in the Hisuian region for this Pokemon to be poisoned and fighting. Look at it. It doesn't even look like that, it looks like he has a lots of fur, you know? So, I believe that a ice type will suit it way better than fighting one. Mostly if you're gonna use it as a ride to climb mountains, alright? So, which one do you think would climb mountains better? An ice type or a fighting or poison one? So yeah, I don't like it. Which is definitely not the case with the quillfish, alright? So yeah, Quillfish originally was from a Sui region, and then over the time it ended up in Johto as well. So the Quillfish we know is actually the Jotonian Quillfish, right? And then in the past it used to evolve to Overquill, but unfortunately with the time and within the Johto region, it didn't find the conditions to evolve to anything else at all, unlikely what happened to Sneasel once he got back to Sino, aka former Isui, alright? Although here, at least, we have a good typing choice, since it used to be dark and poison, and then, due to the new environment, it adapted itself and became water and poison instead. It's okay, it's fine, since we have at least one of the two typings left, okay? So I think it's a very good transition, and I don't see a problem here at all. And yeah, here we have the Weavile one, which now become the substitute evolution, yeah, for the Jotonian Sneasel that we got to know all these years. And it makes us think that it's very sad for Quillfish not to have a substitute evolution along the time, yeah? So Sneasel got to become a Jotonian Sneasel and even find a new evolution back into the Sino region, but then Quillfish never got another evolution with the 4th generation at all, right? So that's pretty sad, and I definitely think Quillfish deserved another evolution later on. Alright then, so now let's move ahead and talk about the new regional evolutions, which are alternative 
for the ones we have known so far. And this time I'm going to be talking about his swing the CDY, his swing Typhlosion, his swing Samurott, his swing Braviary, his swing Avalug, his swing Sligo, and his swing Gudra. Alright? And here, first thing I want to highlight is the ghost type here for the his swing Typhlosion, which unlikely the Zorua and Zoroark lineage I think suits very well. Alright? Why? Mostly because it is a secondary type, which I think is easier to drop, and then because it makes sense that back there into the Hisuian region, it found all the environment conditions for it to reach a fire and ghost type final evolution. And then along with the time, once it moved to Johto, yeah, and then the Jotonian Typhlosion we got to know didn't have the same conditions anymore to achieve a fire and ghost type. This way just dropping the ghost type and became a pure fire type the same way of the rest of its lineage, right? So in this case here I think it's cool and I think it makes sense. So I definitely like it. And here I think it's important to say having new regional evolutions which are alternative for the ones we have known so far is no big deal at all since you have seen this happen before many times, alright? And yeah, of course, I think that I agree with the other types, alright? So, his swing the CDY makes sense, it used to be grass and fighting, but then once he moved to a lower region, he didn't find the environment conditions anymore to become a fighting type and became grass and ghost. Same thing for Samurott, you know, once he got to new Nova, he dropped the dark and remained a pure water. His swing breviary, same thing, became flying normal afterwards. His swing Avalug dropped the ground and remained pure ice. And the same goes for his swing Sligo and Gudra, which used to be dragon and steel. And then with the time, and once they got to the Kalos region, they dropped the steel type and remained pure dragon, right? So I don't see a problem with those typings at all, and I kind of like a lot these new regional evolutions, which works as alternatives for the ones we have known so far. Alright, now let's go ahead and talk about the alternative evolution, which is exclusive from this timeline, alright? And of course, I'm going to be talking about Scyther. So the thing is, back there, into his Sui, Scyther used to evolve to Cleaver, alright? And that's the problem. Why that's the problem? Because we're not talking about a Hisuian Scyther, yeah? We're talking about the same Scyther we know since the Kanto region. In the same Scyther that at one point stopped evolving into Cleaver, probably when it left the Hisuian region, remained without being able to evolve all the time during the Kanto region, and then only find a proper environment and conditions to evolve once again when it got to Johto region. And then instead of becoming a Jotonian Cleaver, it became a Caesar, a completely different Pokemon. So different region, different evolution from the same Pokemon. Alright? And my point here and the thing I don't like it's why though? Why do something like that? It doesn't make sense at all. Although I do like the typing choices, yeah, so I think it makes sense. It used to be bugging flying, and then for some reason, he found the proper conditions to evolve into a bugging rock, and then in a new environment, in new conditions, it kind of evolved into a bugging steel. And if you think about it, I think the typing matches very well, since we know that the Still is kind of a consequence of rock with the time. So we can tell with Onyx, right? Onyx is ground and rock, and once it evolves, if I'm not wrong, it becomes a ground and steel. But anyway, so rock type becomes steel type with the pressure of the dirt, right? So at least I think that's the reason behind it. So I do like a lot the typing. What I don't like is that we're talking about the same Pokemon, right? And then if you think about it, as far as I can tell, there is no such a case ever before in the whole franchise. 
So could you tell me one Pokemon, which is the same one we got to know all these years, that used to evolve to something in the past, and then in the future evolves into something completely different? Alright, we're not talking about a Hisuian Caesar, nor a Jotonian Cleaver, nor a Hisuian Scyther, yeah? So that's extremely confused, and I don't think it ever happened before. So my only question here is why? Why making this so so peculiar, you know, so specific? Why are you coming up with a new logic that in my opinion doesn't make sense at all? Why though? Why don't simply turn this Scyther into a Hisuian Scyther? And then we got to know that in the past Scyther was different, although the Hisuian Scyther evolves into Cleaver, fine, nice, that's that's exactly what happened to Sneasel, alright? And then with the time it adapted to Kanto region and only found a proper condition to evolve once again into something completely different on the Johto region, which would be pretty much the same thing of Sneasel evolving into Weavile. New regional form, new evolution from a new region, right? So it would make way more sense. So this right here is confusing and in my opinion it is lame. I'm not complaining about the visual of the Pokemon which I think is red, nor the typing. I like all of that, I just don't like the fact that it's a case that we never seen before in the past, right? I don't think they had any necessity at all to come up with something new and in my opinion lame like this. Alright, so now let's go ahead and talk about the new evolutions which are exclusive from the past timeline. And I'm gonna be talking about Ursa Luna and oh my gosh, wider. There we go, alright. So Ursa Luna, we know it used to be a final evolution of a lineage we have known for quite a while, which is Teddy Ursa and Ursa Ring. So it makes us believe that it used to be a three stages lineage in the past, originally, alright? Teddy Ursa, Ursa Ring, Ursa Luna. But then, unfortunately, as this Pokemon moved to the Johto region, so again, we're not talking about original form, we're talking about the same Pokemon we always knew, so that's pretty much the same case of Scyther, right? Almost. But here is different, because Scyther we always knew they could evolve since Johto, yeah? But here, unlikely that case, we never knew that this lineage had a second evolution and a third form. So, I don't know, that's kind of weird. So we know originally these Pokemon are from Hisui and they used to evolve into Ursa Luna. So as weird as it sounds, and I cannot say that I like it, I get it, all right? At least the typing makes sense. So please, please, would you hurt to do the same thing for the other cases, the previous ones? So yeah, in back there into the Hisuian region, since it was a way more rocky and mountain region, it makes all sense for this Pokemon to have its final form as a normal and ground. And then, since it moved to a different habitat and a different environment, it never find it again the conditions in order to reach its final evolution. Alright? And who knows, could still be normal and ground, but I don't know, at least in the worst scenario, it could at least remain pure normal as the previous ones always been. So that's fine, if there was all of that, I'll be good with it, okay? I actually like this Ursa Luna thing, almost, alright? My biggest problem here is definitely with Wider. Seriously, Wider, it is an evolution of Stantler? <laughs> must be kidding me, seriously? Look at them, just look at them. They are pretty much the same Pokemon, almost the same thing. For me, it's pretty much like the same thing of saying that Summer Saucebuck is the evolution of Winter Saucebuck. Dude, seriously? They look pretty much the same, look at them. Same face, same shape, same body, same tail, almost the same antlers. The only thing is this one has a kind of beard and this one doesn't have. So, that's all it takes for you to consider this Pokemon an evolution of this Pokemon? Seriously, not a freaking Hisuian Stantler? So what are you, what are you saying? Like after almost 25 years later, you're gonna tell us that this Pokemon used to evolve in the past 
into something that's ridiculously the same thing of the one we always knew. So my question here is why? Why are you doing this? Why are you giving us this information? Why are you making this Pokemon, which has no evolution for almost 25 years, now able to evolve into something completely funky? You know? Alright, it finally had the right typing. Yeah, I'll give you that. He finally has the right typing. So we all know that Stantler should be normal and psychic from the scratch. That's undebatable, alright? I agree with you, but what I don't agree is that you chose the right typing, but you chose the wrong solution for it. Wider sucks. It shouldn't be wider. It shouldn't be an evolution of Stantler. It should be Hisui and Stantler, making this Hisui and Stantler the original one that we never got to new, and then turning the one that we thought to be the original Stantler actually the Jotonian Stantler. And then for some reason, in this new environment and new conditions, it didn't find what it takes to remain a normal and psychic again. This way, dropping the psychic and remaining only a normal type with some traces of psychic that we all know what I'm talking about, right? So yeah, I definitely don't like this solution at all. To be honest, I kind of like hate the concept of the wide deer. I think it's a completely unnecessary Pokemon that should easily and definitely be a Hisuian Stantler. It would be way cooler and way nicer to the Stantler we always used to know, alright? Wow, alright then, let's move ahead and talk about the new lineage, which is exclusive for this timeline game, alright? And then, just when you think that things cannot get worse, guess what? <laughs> they do get worse, alright? So here we go, now we're talking about a white striped Basculin. Seriously. White striped Basculin. Which now we know used to evolve into Basculegion. Both male and female. And just to be completely clear here. I love this concept of a Basculin, not a white one, evolving into something like Basculegion. I think it's very badass. I think it's very cool. And I'm fine with that, alright? And I think actually the typing is very awesome as well. So it was a water type and now it evolved into a water and ghost type, which do the very sad and also badass conditions makes total sense. So I think this lineage and this thing of basically evolving into something super badass as Basco Legion, the way it happens, is awesome. I definitely like it. What I don't like it, and I can say that I hate, is the fact that you didn't use any of the Basculin you used to know from the Unova region. Seriously? <laughs> That's what you came up with? You, you must be kidding me, seriously. So you just made the useless Basculin Pokemon you got to know even more useless now, because none of them used to evolve into Basculin region. So it means that they will never be able to evolve at all. They never been able, they will never be able to evolve. And I think that's completely lame. I think it sucks. I hate it. I don't think it makes sense at all. Seriously, I don't like it at all. Basculin is not a big deal of Pokemon at all. I think Magikarp is more interesting than Basculin, you know? And then you go ahead and just make them even more useless, saying like, oh, you know those useless two different colors fish Pokemon? Yeah, they pretty much nothing, you know, like, because the only one that matters used to be a freaking white striped Basculin one that we never got to see anymore. So, seriously, why don't you simply never ever came up with this white striped Basculin thing and just use it, the Basculin we always known since the Nova region, and use them in order to evolve to Basculin region in the past? How cool would it be that if the blue striped one actually evolved into a blue striped Basco Legion, which now we know is a female. So now we can tell that actually it wasn't a blue striped Basco Legion. It means it was a female Basco Legion. And then why not the red striped Basco Legion we always got to know. Now we know that it is used to evolve into the male Basco Legion. 
So now we know that this red stripe best collision actually is a male best collision. Yeah, wouldn't it make more sense since we have this kind of male and female thing for a while, huh? We saw it on the fourth generation, fifth generation, sixth generation, and also on the very last one, the eighth generation. So yeah, why this Pokemon get to have male and female, and then when it comes to Basculin, it is like red striped and blue striped. What does it mean? So make your mind. So or is it colors? Or is it gender? So in the past it has genders, and then in the future or in the current timeline, it doesn't have gender anymore. Genders don't matter anymore, and they have like colors. What matters is the color of the stripes. Oh my gosh, I think it sucks. I think it seriously sucks. I hate this white stripe basculine. I think it's pure garbage, and I think they should have used the basculine we know to make them at least useful in the past right and before you come and say oh but that's pretty much what happened to young mask it evolved into something new and different i don't know i don't think it's the same case at all you know because young mask had a regional form right so now it was a galarian young mask so it was a different young mask than you used to know that evolves into something different all right so i think that's not the same case at all this new lineage exclusive from the past is a whole new thing and in my opinion extremely lame so my only question here is why why in earth you would come up with this solution when it would be way way easier to simply make the best clean we always knew evolve into this very awesome badass pokemon even if they only existed in the past all right so now let's go ahead and talk about the new pokemon which is exclusive from this timeline which is enamorous yeah that's right if you didn't know so far now you know that we are probably talking about the fourth genie right since in the fifth generation you nova we got to know tornados and thundorus and then later on on the black and white two we got to know landorus as well and now all these years after, we get to know that in the past they used to be a fourth genie, the Enamorous one, which was Fairy and Fly. And that's the thing, alright? So, if you used to be a fourth genie, and then with the time, the generations, all we got to know was the three genies that we always knew, and these Pokemon has simply vanished. So I think it sucks, it sucks terribly, right? And I hate it, and I truly hope that's not the case. Although, I think this Pokemon can be super awesome, even though if it has vanished with the time, and that's why it never have been mentioned on our current timeline. And the only way it could happen if then instead of being the fourth genie, the Xenomorphs genie one, was actually the first one, alright? It was actually the one that originated all the other three ones. So if that's the case, so that's the lore, I think you have everything you need to be something super awesome and not something super lame. So I truly, truly hope that the Xenomore thing is the only genie around the Hisuian region in the past, you know? And then along with the generations, along with the time, somehow this Pokemon originated all the three genies we got to know all these years. I truly hope that that's what's going to happen. Alright, so before we keep going and talk about the Lord forms, I want to ask you something. Do you realize what all these Pokemon have in common? And when I mean all these Pokemon, I include Cleaver as well. Do you? Do you have any clue? No? Think about it. Look at them. Have you ever seen them before? <laughs> no, huh? And that's the point. And that's the problem. The thing they all have in common is they are all freaking extinct in our current timeline. So all these super cool looking Pokemon 
Now you wider should be his swim. It's Tentler. They all got extinct. Alright? Since we never got to see them anymore in all the eight generations of our current timeline. So why? Why do you do that? Why do you throw away something so cool like this? You know? That's depressing. That's lame. That sucks. Alright. <laughs> oh my gosh. Talk about sucking. Here we go. Nothing's that bad that cannot get worse. Nothing. Not even white striped basculine. Lord Forms. Oh my gosh. Here we go. We have Lord Palkia and Lord Dialga. Alright? And then, you know, and that's not a big deal at all. Since this Lord Forms thing is pretty much a new way to do the same thing they have done before with the primal forms, right? So, in my opinion, Lord Palkia and Lord Dialga are no different, at least talking about the name of the form, right? So, form-wise, form-wise, is pretty much the same. So, the Lord Palkia is pretty much a primal Groundon, and the Lord Dialga is pretty much a primal Kyogre. Although, at the same time, they should be pretty much the same thing, they are not, right? They are definitely not, because at least Primal Groundon and Primal Kyogre, they had different typing than their original forms, and that's definitely not the case here with Lord Palkia and Lord Dialga, right? Since I believe, as far as I can tell, they have the same typing of the forms we got to know from the fourth generation. So why? Why do you come up with a Lord form that should work just like a primal form and you still give it the same freaking type it used to have? Seriously, that's the best you could think about and that's not by far not the worst part here. The worst thing here is not the, the typing, alright? Because, alright, it would be fine for you to come up with a Lord form and remain with the same typing. If and only if it was exactly like the Primal Kyogre and Primal Groundon visual wise, because at least Primal Kyogre and Primal Groundon they look way more awesome than they used to look. They look more badass. Look at this. Looks like a freaking giant Godzilla of lava. Look at Primal Kyogre. It looks like a freaking badass fish killer whale monster gigantic stuff you know so that's awesome they look improved they look more aggressive they look more badass because they are freaking primal forms and then what do we have what do we got with these so-called lord forms look at them oh my gosh look at them look how incredibly shitty they look like Dude, look to this Lord Palkia. What is it? Is a centaur? Is a centaur with no arms? Have you ever seen a centaur with just shoulders? <laughs> because as far as I can tell, these round things, it works as Palkia's shoulder later on. What happened? That time he has like four legs, but didn't have two arms, you know? Or if you want to tell me like, no, 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 it was a centaur-like, and it had like four legs, and then along with the time, it became a bipedal, all right? Okay then, so that's the case, would it hurt you to put the shoulders there on top of the things that will become its arms? Yeah, would it make way more sense for these round things be right here above the leg and below the body? Yeah, and then with the time, it simply moved this limb upwards and it became its arm no <laughs> no you came up with this fairy slash centaur thing which has shoulders and has no arms are you freaking kidding me look at it it looks ridiculous it looks awful it looks stupid right so i'm so sorry for those who like this visual i think it's the most ridiculous thing i ever seen hey I'm fine with Pokemon who has no arms, you know? If you bring up a Pokemon that has no arms, I think it's completely garbage, but it's still way better 
that a Pokemon that has shoulders but has no freaking arms. And then, oh my gosh, let's take a look at Lord Dialga. First of all, it looks way more like a fish than, I don't know, a time dragon, you know? Look at these, you know, things. What are those? Are those fins? Are those flippers? Are those legs? Are those claws? What in hell is that, you know? It looks more like a Kyogre than a Dialga. And then the worst part for me, the thing I hate the most, what in nerf is this? Seriously, what in nerf is this thing? What happened to it? Did it swallow a whole Cofagrigus and couldn't swallow it and got stuck on its throat? <laughs> Seriously, that's the only explanation it could have. Or it has a freaking bazooka cannon on its throat. So, which one is worse? I don't get it. It's like, what in earth is that protuberance extremely huge in the middle of its throat? It makes no sense, seriously. If you don't come up with like, oh yeah, in the past they found uh, Cofagrigus stuck on Dialga's throat. And then once it could spit it out, it became the Dialga we got to know since generation 4. Alright, that would be cool. Anything other than that, it would be definitely lame. And I think its visual sucks, alright? I definitely hate these lore forms, but not the concept. Or I think the concept is good. It's just like bringing back the old primal forms. Although, the way they did it is freaking super lame. No new typing, no better looking visuals, alright? They look way sillier, way shittier than they used to be, and they have the same typing, and they are all a huge nightmare, alright? I just hope they could also give Giratina a Lord form as well, and this time that at least looks better than the forms we knew so far, alright? Although, <laughs> I doubt that's gonna be the case, alright? Because, seriously, from the same people who came up with those designs, do we think they will be able to come up with something even more red? than this Giratina form? I don't think so at all. Oof, alright, so that's it. We just finished the first part of the video, alright? Which was the longer one. And now let's dive in into the second part, or should I say, the second problem of this whole Pokemon Legend RQ thing. The two timelines, alright? Yeah, because if you couldn't tell at this point, now we have two timelines. The past one, where the Pokemon Legend Arceus is going to be happening, and also the current timeline, where all the generations we have known so far are present, alright? So yeah, from Kanto to Galar, they are all somehow connected, yeah? And that's so true that on Pokemon Journeys, which by the way, I freaking hate, and I hate Go, and I hate that they ruined the Pokemon show with the journeys and stuff, you know? So in my opinion, it's completely lame and it has nothing to do with all the other previous seasons. But as we can see there, it's all connected. Pokemon from all generations pretty much nowadays can be found in, in on each other regions as well, you know? And as the Ash itself does, it goes from Galar all the way back and forth to the other regions. Kento, Johto, Hoenn, Sino, Unova, Kalos, and Alola. We have seen this before. So, yeah, I think Pokemon Journeys is lame and it sucks, but at least it gave us that, alright? The journeys to show us, to prove to us that all the generations and Pokemon in this timeline are somehow connected. And yeah, of course, I know that's not actually true because we cannot have all the Pokemon for all the franchise into the same game because we all know that Pokemon is a logistic nightmare, alright? Too many Pokemon, too many forms, too many shines, you know? Too many sprites, too many moves, too many data to deal with. That's why they cannot keep it up, you know? They, they, they don't, they, don't ca they, they cannot keep up at all. So that's why they never give us all the Pokemon in one game for us. So. We all know that Pokemon is not about catching them all for a good while, yeah? So no big deal here. But at least part of them, or some of them, or should be most of them, are still connected somehow 
into this timeline. And the great question here is, is this going to happen with the past timeline? Is the past timeline somehow be connected to the current one we have known for 25 years? And if you want my opinion, I truly doubt that that's going to be the case, right? I think that the past Pokemon will never meet with the new Pokemon, or with the current Pokemon, right? And I think that's such a shame, right? I think that's very bad, and I feel very sorry about it. Unless... Okay, so hold on, just hear me out. Unless... If they come up with more past timeline games, instead of just one game, Legend Arceus, yeah, I mean exactly what you're thinking. Imagine how cool it would be if they come up with more games from the past timeline. And I'm talking about Legends Mew, Pokemon Legends Celebi, Pokemon Legends Jirachi, Pokemon Legends Victini, Pokemon Legends Hoopa, Pokemon Legends Cosmog, and why not Pokemon Legends Calyrex, huh? Wouldn't it be super awesome to have all these past timeline games released in one day? I think so, right? And here we go to my conclusion, okay? So hold on, just sit tight a little bit more, because I'm gonna be concluding my point with this whole video right now. Alright, so here what I think about the Hisuian region and the Hisuian Legend Arceus, alright? So despite all the problems I have with V, which I have told you so far in this video, I truly think that this whole thing could definitely bring a brilliant feature to the whole franchise, alright? I think it has everything to be awesome, and I truly hope so, and I would be very, very excited about it, alright? Although only and if only if they attain to some conditions, right? I think he has everything to be such a great thing and a great strategy for the franchise if and only if they drop the main timeline, yeah, the current one, the one we are used to, and then instead of releasing a ninth generation, just forget about it completely, drop it, and instead of it, come up with more Pokemon Legends, right? So I think that's so I think that would be a definitely clever and brilliant solution actually, all right? To switch from keep going with the current generation and start throwing back the past timeline in the former regions of the ones we have known so far. Yeah, so I think that's definitely a brilliant solution for the franchise. So I don't know, so imagine in the animated series, if Ash finds a device or something that can teleport him back into the past, and then he goes all the way back to Hisui, and that's pretty much rebooting the whole franchising again. Because from Hisui, which we know is the old Sino, then Ash could go to old Johto, to old Kanto, to old Hoenn, and all the other generation we know. Have you ever stopped to imagine that? How cool it would be? And if you think about it, you would be few for, I don't know, at least 25 years more of the franchise. Because we're going to be pretty much rebooting all the generations we have known so far. So we're going to be coming up with the same thing, although in a different way, in a different timeline, which is in the past, and which is going to connect all the super cool past Pokemon we got to know, then now we have to accept they all got extinct, right? So I think that would be freaking perfect if that was the case. And it will match, you know, you'd be you'd be convincible. Like Ashen traveling back in time and then doing all the journey has done for these last 25 years once again. Right? I think it would be brilliant. And another condition I think this whole legend thing could be very, very awesome, is that if they definitely, and please, stop with the 
two versions of the same game theme, right? Which fortunately I think is the case, since so far we never heard anything about a Pokemon Legends Arceus time or Pokemon Legends Arceus space, right? Which I think is a relief and I hope that's definitely not the case at all. So at least that. And to be honest here, I want to make a disclaimer. I definitely hate the fifth generation, right? Not only because it's unnecessarily huge and expandable decks, but because it broke the brilliant tradition of coming up with three versions of the same game. So I definitely hate Black and White 2, you know? It started a trend that I hated, and I think they ruined the Pokemon core game series we all got used to along with the first four generations, you know? So if you ask me, I think Black and White 2 should never ever happen, and instead of that, they should have released a third version, Pokemon Grey, alright? And don't get me wrong, I hate the other ones as much, alright? So I think in the sixth generation, Kalos region, they should have come up with Pokemon X and Y, and then finally with the Pokemon Z. And of course, I'm not saying that the reboot of the third generation, Auras, yeah, Omega, Ruby, and Alpha Sapphire, shouldn't have happened. No, I think they should, right? I think they should have happened along with a Pokemon Z version. And the same goes for the seventh generation, Alola, where I think they should have come with the Sun and Moon, and then eventually with the Pokemon Eclipse instead of the bullshit of the Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, right? So at least in my opinion, they should have come with the Pokemon Eclipse and already came up with the next reboot of the fourth generation, which is the one we just got right now, you know, last year, which is Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. So I think it should have happened all the way back there along with the seventh generation. And, don't get me wrong, I still think the same thing about the most recent generation, F1, also known as Galar, alright? So Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield are cool, but it would be way cooler if instead of those shitty DLCs, and yeah, come on, seriously, DLCs, you not even come up with a whole new game, as it was on the Black and White 2 and the Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, now you gave us like a shitty DLC, you know, which is not a whole game at all. So I think it's definitely super lame. And instead of Isle Armor and Crown Tundra, you should come up with, I don't know, Pokemon Armor perhaps, you know? So it should definitely have been a freaking third version of this game. Alright, so I think it would be great if they drop the main timeline, if they stop doing these two versions of the same game bullshit, and... Of course, if they keep up with the good stuff. And what do I mean by that? I mean, keep up with the good mechanics, alright? So I'm very glad and very happy with a bunch of things this game is throwing us right now. And I mean the wardings, alright? So I definitely like the wardings, yeah? I think they work pretty much like the Kahunas from the Alola region. And if you think about it, the Wardens are like the precursors of the Gym Leaders we got to know in our current timeline. So somehow in the past, the thing we, we know as the Gym Leaders are just a consequence of the Wardens back there, right? What makes a Lola region very roots, right? Very rustic. Because if you think about it, the Kahuna thing is something way closer than the Wardens than the gym leaders used to be. Yeah, so it shows us how Alola region was kind of frozen time, yeah? Since you only get the gym leader thing after a while, alright? So the wardens is a very cool mechanic, a very good thing that I think matches perfect and explains why we got to get the Kahunas on the seventh generation. Another thing I think is awesome and I think it's perfect for the Pokemon games and I never want to see another Pokemon game without this mechanic anymore is the so-called open world. Yeah, I know it's not completely 100% open world, but doesn't matter. It looks awesome, it works awesome, and I think that is everything we always want for a Pokemon game. You know, somewhere where you can be free 
to explore, to go any direction you want, you know, and to find as much Pokemon as you can, you know, interact with them and do everything else that an open world mechanic can provide us. So I loved this mechanic, I think it's super awesome, and I hope it, it comes to stay, alright? Another thing that I like a lot is the Noble Pokemon. So yeah, I think Noble Pokemon work pretty much like the Trial ones from the 7th generation. Yeah, we used to have the Trials with those huge Pokemon and stuff, the Totem Pokemon. So I think that the Totem Pokemon, at the same way as the Kahuna, are somehow a heritage of the Wardens, the Totem Pokemons are somehow a heritage of the Noble Pokemon, right? So I think it's awesome. I think they look very badass, and the fact that you have to battle them with a different strategy, you know, and different mechanic where you need to fight them with your Pokemon and yourself as a player, I think it's awesome. I think it makes sense, I think it's different, and I think it's difficult as well, and I think it makes the Pokemon game franchise way better. So I definitely love this mechanic, and I hope it never goes away. Another thing I also like a lot is not YG at all, it should be, again, his Sui and Stantler, but I do love the first person point of view, right? So I think that being able to, you know, ride this Pokemon and have this first person point of view, it's awesome, you know? I don't know, but for me, it kind of reminded me Shadow of Colossus, right? Where you could ride in almost an open world on a horseback, right? So, unfortunately, in that game, we couldn't have this first person, which would be awesome to see the Colossus from the first point of view, you know, like all the way down there, you know, looking all the way up there to the Colossus, I think would be awesome, right? And although we don't have Colossus here in this game, we do have some huge Noble and Alpha Pokemon, which I think would be super great to have a look at them from this point of view. So I definitely like this mechanic, and I hope it is never going away, because it suits so good the open world concept. Talking about it, I also like a lot the group battles, alright? I know that's no big deal at all, like nothing new, but I think it suits even better now within this mechanic, this open world thing, where you could manage to have a group battle in a way which is way more organic, alright? Another thing I like a lot is the stats, is the new stat thing, which we have now uh, different stats and the ones that can affect even the player, right? So I think it makes lots of sense, since now the player is going pretty much battling the Pokemon as well, so why not also suffering the consequences as the bad stats? So I definitely love this mechanic, along with the Alpha Pokemon one, I think it makes sense and gives you the option of going for a more badass experience, right? By choosing to catch the Alpha One. Another thing I like a lot is that they are coming up with new moves, right? I think it's super welcome and it will definitely improve the experience. Another thing is the new items. So now I think it's awesome that you don't have to exchange Pokemon at all in order to be able to evolve. And I think the new items makes total sense since the ones we know in the current timeline wouldn't make sense at all to be the same back there into the past timeline, right? So I think new items are perfect and match very well the game proposal. And then another thing I do like a lot is the move set, right? More specifically the move pool. So I, I love the thing that now you will be able to make a Pokemon learn once again a move he has forgotten, right? So it is a way more uh, dynamic move pool, you know, and gonna give way more options and it will make total sense because if this Pokemon used to know that move, why never get to use that move anymore, you know, doesn't make any sense. So I think this mechanic is one of my favorites, alright, since now I can teach you a new move right now just because I'm in need of it, but I can still retrieve the old move and teach you once again, right? So I think it's awesome, I definitely like it. And then the last mechanic that I also like a lot is the different Pokeballs, right? I think it makes sense, I think it deserves to be different and deserves to be different types 
as the ones we know nowadays, since it wouldn't make any sense at all to be the same, right? So, a huge, huge, huge thumbs up for all those mechanics. And of course, of course, I said, keep the good stuff. And when I say that, I mean, keep all those good stuff and definitely, definitely keep away the shitty stuff, also known as Ultra Beasts and Dynamax slash Gigantamax, right? In my opinion, I'm so sorry about you if you think different, but dude, in my opinion, they stink, right? They suck. Seriously, come on. We never wanted outer space Pokemon, nor ridiculous gigantic forms of the same Pokemon we always knew, you know? Why? Like, why you come up with something like that? That's so stupid, that's so... So no Pokemon at all, you know? Like, Ultra Beasts, they're nothing like Pokemon. Gigantamaxing, they're nothing like the Pokemon we always used to know, you know? So, seriously, you drop it, the Mega Evolution, to give us Ultra Beasts and Dynamaxing? Oh, that's pathetic, seriously. So why did you come up with all this bullshit if we during this whole time you could just simply drop us more mega evolutions? Seriously, that's all we wanted. That's all I wanted was to see more mega evolution. Mega evolution is cool, makes sense, you know? It's awesome. Come on, just I don't know, just give me a reason to want to catch a dance parse. Yeah? Imagine how cool it would be if you had a mega dance parse. If you had a mega evolution, it would be awesome. Seriously, it would be way more awesome than freaking Pokemon from wormholes. Or making a Pokemon become a colossal thing. Yeah, you could even take a look at them from the first person point of view. So that's bullshit, alright? I think those mechanics are bullshit. Mostly the Gigantamax one. Come on, you didn't even give us like a freaking Gigantamax dance parts. <laughs> so yeah. Oh my gosh, I definitely hope they keep the hell away from these awful mechanics, right? And just keep up the good ones I have mentioned previously. So yeah, there you have it, alright? There is all my complaints and thoughts about Pokemon Legend Arceus. And just to be clear, I think he has everything, everything to be brilliant, to be awesome. It should be a freaking spotless future for the franchise, alright? I do believe so, and I do hope so, and let's pray and see what they're gonna do with this franchise from now on. Anyways, if you didn't dislike this video and close it until now, I'm very glad that you made it all the way towards the end, alright? If that's the case, please go ahead and check it out my other videos to get to know more about my Pokemon board game series, alright? You can check this playlist I'm gonna be leaving up there in the cards, or you could go straight to the Gamepedia of this game, which is the pkmmtr.com, right? There you're gonna be learning everything about this game series, which is a board game completely free to play. You can even download it and print it out yourself just like you use DIY. Also, check it out my Etymology Master online course, since this course is what sponsors this video, right? And anyways, if you made all, the, all this way, if you like it, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up, subscribe and share this video with everyone else who still doesn't know what you think about this new Pokemon Legend Arceus, alright? Also, go ahead and ring the bell in order to get notified about new videos here in this channel. I hope you guys like it and I see you in the next one.